Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to our Hanafi Fiqh class. We are doing the kitab known as Alaw Sunan of Mulana Zafar Ahmad Sanvi Rahimahullah and we are currently dealing with the chapter of Tahara, specifically the uh, nullifiers of Wudu and we are continuing on from last week and in fact the week before that which was dealing with the issue of touching a woman not breaking your wudu and of course vice versa a woman touching a man and it's on that point that we will continue on from tonight inshallah so without further delay bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala so we are on page 181 uh, of volume one we are starting from hadith number 127 let's see 127 uh, from this point here which is عن أبي عن عن رضي الله عنها قالت قبل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعض نسائه ثم صلى ولم يتوضا أخرجه دار قطني وقال تفرد به حاجب عن وكيع ووهم فيه والصواب عن وكيع بهذا الإسناد أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يقبل وهو وهو صائم وحاجب لم يكن له كتاب وإنما كان يحدث من حفظه lengthy narration or at least short hadith lengthy chain so let me read it portion for portion so it's narrated by imam abu bakr and naysa puri from naysa pur nishapur uh, but we in arabic obviously no pa so it, you we use a pa naysa pur from uh, imam hajib ibn sulaiman who narrated from imam waqi' who narrated from hisham ibn urwa who narrated from his father urwa uh, from hadra aisha radiyallahu anha and she, he says that hadra aisha radiyallahu anha said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, kissed one of his wives and thereafter performed salah without having made wudu. Imam al Qutni rahimahullah reports this hadith and thereafter says that Hajib uh, alone narrates this narration from Waqi' and he makes some waham, you know, he's got some assumption, some, in other words, it's a word to say that he's mistaken in this narration. He says the correct uh, narration, correct wording should be uh, from Waqi' or this chain of narration, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to kiss his wives while he's fasting. Nothing to do with salah and making wudu. And Imam Dara Qutni says, Hajib, he didn't have a kitab. Uh, you know, amongst the muhaddithin, there were some who narrated purely from memory. And then there were some who narrated purely from their books. And there, uh, there were some who narrated some from books and some from memory. So those who were, you know, uh, got impeccable minds, they would narrate everything from memory. And there were some who, despite having good minds, they would only narrate from, uh, from their books. So, you know, it's not like it's one way or the other. It's just that the, the different fuqaha, uh, different muhaddithin had different uh, preferences. And there were some, on account of their weaker memory, they would only narrate from a book where they would write the hadith down so that when they narrate it, they know for certain I have written it down like this, so there's no uh, mistake in it. One such narrator, a narrator, very famous one, I've mentioned him before, is a narrator by the name of Ibn Lahia. You'll have come across his name many times. So uh, Abdullah Ibn Lahia is regarded as being weak uh, on account of his uh, weak memory, but he's not a, exactly a weak narrator. Uh, he, there was a point in his time when he used to, uh, he, used to he was a person who had a lot of uh, books where he had written a hadith down in. Then at one point in time, towards the ending of his life, uh, his house burnt out and with it all of his books where he had collected a hadith in it. So obviously a man who was a faqih, muhaddith, narrating a hadith to people his whole life. Then a calamity like this befell him. So everything that he had uh, uh, gained over all the years was gone in a flash. So from this point onwards, uh, Imam Ibn Lahia now started narrating from memory to the best of his uh, knowledge. But when it comes to the field of hadith, to the best of one's knowledge is not exactly something accepted in the broader scheme amongst the uh, fuqaha and muhadditeen. So uh, at this late stage in his life, uh, Imam Ibn Lahia would narrate, and on account of his, the fact that his memory was not all that great, that's what, hence why he would only narrate from his books in previous years. So he would sometimes get mixed up and say, it's narrated from so-and-so, from so-and-so, while in reality, it may have been the opposite way around. So 
as a result of that, he, he got written down in the books of Sharh al-Ta'adil as being a weak narrator. But the Hanafi fuqaha have clarified this point, and there were a number of uh, uh, the ulama, uh, fuqaha, muhaddithin that had narrated from him. And you know, the, the, the term which jumps to mind now is what one of the ulama have stated, is that the, when the Abadila narrate from Imam Abdullah ibn Lahia, then their narrations are accepted. Who are the Abadila? Abadila is the plural, basically, of the name Abdullah. So Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak and others, there, there were a few of them whose names all were Abdullah. They all narrated from Imam Abdullah ibn Lahia at the time when Imam ibn Lahia was in his prime, narrating only from his books. Thus, everything they heard from him was all authentic and reliable. There were some who came during his late stage in life, when he was now, uh, when he had now lost his books and he was narrating from memory and he slipped up here and there and then as a result of which the fuqaha, uh, at least the muhaddithin at that point said, we can't rely on him at this late stage. So some people make it seem as if, oh, he's a weak narrator, throw him away. But they don't know the reality of the situation. So like I was saying, the field of hadith is more than just what uh, some people would, uh, uh, you know, the, the barely sketch the surface they, and they think they have all the knowledge where hadith is concerned. Very far removed is that from reality. But in any case, so this is what Imam uh, at Darakutni Rahimahullah said, that Hajib didn't have a book, he would narrate uh, a hadith from his memory. So uh, what Imam uh, Darakutni basically is saying is that this is actually a mistake from Imam Hajib because it should have been because Imam Dara Qutni knew the narration with the same chain of narration but says and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yuqabbilu ba'd uh, yuqabbilu wa huwa sa'imun this, these are the words but here in this narration it says qabbala ba'd nisa'i thum salla wa lam yatawadda totally different uh, words but with the same chain. So Imam Dara Qutni felt, well, this was a mistake on the side of Imam Hajib. But the reality is that, the reality is that this was, when we're talking about waham, you know, like an assumption, the reality is that the assumption was more from the side of Imam Dara Qutni, rahimahullah. And Imam Zayla'i, rahimahullah, he now clarifies this, he says. So he starts out, Qala Zayla'i, وَالنَّيْسَابُورِ إِمَامٌ مَشْهُورٌ وَحَاجِبٌ لَا يُعْرَفُ فِيهِ مُطْعٍ وَقَدْ حَدَّثَ عَنْهُ النَّسَائِ وَوَثَّقَهُ وَقَالَ فِي مَوْضِعٍ آخر لَا بَأَسَ بِهِ وَبَاقِي الْإِسْنَادِ لَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْهِ He says, uh, Imam Zayla'i, he says, the Imam Abu Bakr and Naysaburi, he's a famous Imam. As for the narrator Imam Hajib, there's no la yu'afu la fihi mut'in. There's no ta'an. Ta'an is another word, you know, for jarh, like what jarh wa ta'adil. So there's no faults known that anybody has pointed out any fault with regards to him. And Imam al-Nasai, rahimahullah, has narrated from Imam Hajib and graded him as being siqa. Now, as I mentioned uh, uh, not too long back in our I'alaw uh, sunan class, I've been mentioned that when we're talking about the famous books of hadith, the six famous books, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawud, Nasai, Ibn Majah, and we uh, were to rank them in order of authenticity as a whole, Bukhari comes number one, Muslim comes number two, Nasai is number three. Obviously, we're not talking about the all the books of hadith or that, that anyway that's a topic for another time we're just talking about the gradings as far as the narrations are in these specific books so uh, there are more authentic narrations found in sunan and nasai than there is for example in sunan uh, at tirmidhi for example but anyway so imam and nasai created imam hajib as being a thiqa which is the you know the trustworthy reliable you can take all these narrations. In another place, Imam, Imam Nasai says, La ba'asa bihi. So he explicitly states that there's no problem with uh, Hajib ibn Sulaiman. So you can narrate from him. And he says, Wa baqi al-isnaad la You know, there's no, you, uh, who's, who comes after him? Imam Waqi' Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah, uh, who narrates from Hisham ibn Urwa, who narrates from Urwa ibn Zubair, who narrates from Hadra Aisha radiyallahu anha. So he says, you don't even have to ask. Everybody else is, you know, there's no question about anybody else because they're all uh, beyond uh, reliable. So he says, So now he goes on to explain. He says, 
فلقائل أن يقول هو تفر هو تفر ثقة وتحديثه من حفظه إن كان أوجب إن كان أوجب كثرة خطئه بحيث يجب ترك حديثه فلا يكون ثقة ولكن النساء وثقه وإن لم يجب خروجه عن ثقة فلعله لم يهم وكان نسبته إلى الوهم بسبب مخالفته الأكثرين له So Imam Zain Al-Ahi clarifies, he says, we Imam Ad-Dara Qunni said that Hajib ibn Sulaiman alone narrates this uh, thing. He says, a person could now argue and say that, yes, maybe Imam Hajib ibn Sulaiman <laughs> And is the only one who narrates this uh, narration. But that does not now mean that there is some fault with the narration. So he says, Tafarrad bihi hajib. He's a thiqa narrator, uh, and he narrating from his memory. He said, if, uh, now to simplify what is written here, he says that if he was making so many mistakes that he mixes things up, then he would not have been called thiqa in the first place. But Imam al Nasai calls him thiqa. So, you know, therefore, on account of the fact that he is thiqa, he's not a person who assumes and make up things and make mistakes. So therefore, in reality, Imam Hajib ibn Sulaiman didn't make an assumption. He's narrating with the same chain of narration. And there are two narrations like this. So what Imam Dara Qudni reports, uh, uh, that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissed his wife while he, is, uh, while he was fasting, we say, yes, we've got no problem with that. That chain of narration is fine. And the narration that uh, Imam Abu Bakr and Isa Puri reports with the same chain, but with the, these different words that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissed one of his wives and then performed salah without having made the wudu, there's no assumption in it because the, there was no, uh, let's put it this way, no mistake. It actually is a second narration. And Imam Hajib bin Sulaiman happened to only narrate it to Imam Abu Bakr and Isa Puri. Or at least, the, as far as we know, he only narrated to him. So yes, it is a Munfarid narration, you know, it's a Tafarrud narration, uh, one chain, but that doesn't mean that now it's weak. Besides, you know, the, I'm getting a bit into the technical nature on account of the fact that we are doing Hadith and Fiqh in one. Otherwise, there was would have been no need for me to really delve into this uh, that much. But yeah, so he says, why was uh, uh, why did Imam Adara Qudni now say that Imam Hajib bin Sulaiman was assuming things? He says the reason is because the narration of, of, of Imam Hajib bin Sulaiman here yeah, goes against Mukhalafatul Akhtarina Lahu. The majority who narrate this with this chain of narration, it has the other wordings. So they, the, therefore they felt that it was a mistake uh, and an assumption on the part of Imam Haji bin Sulaiman that he now said these are the words with this chain of narration instead of the other words that Imam Dara Qutni reports that is actually what the words of this narration but he says قُلْتُ فَالْحَدِيثُ حَسَنٌ لَا سِيِّمَا وَلَهُ شَوَاهِدٌ كَثِيرَةٌ عَنَ عَيْشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا بِهَذَا الْمَعْنَى But long story short, the narration is regarded as being reliable and authentic on account of the fact that there are many supporting evidences reported from, from Hadra Aisha رضي الله عنها with the same meaning. So the fact that this chain specifically that you're arguing about this uh, nitty gritty details here in reality, it doesn't harm anything because even if we were to say that this chain is weak, the other evidences to which are strong that we already passed by is sufficient to raise this one's level to the level of authenticity. So it's neither here nor there at the end of the day. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's hope we can finish still this chapter uh, tonight, inshallah, because we've still got... Yeah. Hopefully we can still finish it, inshallah. Um, where were we now? Okay. Hadith number 128. Ali ibn Abdul Aziz al-Warraq, an Asim ibn Ali, an Abi Awais, haddathani Hisham ibn Urwa, an Abihi, an Aisha radiyallahu anha, annahu balagaha qawla ibn Umar fi fi al-qubla al-wudu. Faqalat, kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuqabbil wa huwa sa'imun thumma la yatawadda. Akhrajahu, akhrajahu Dara Qutni wa qala, la a'lamu haddathabihi an Asim ibn Ali, hakada, ghiru Ali ibn Abdul Aziz. Okay. 
we have a, a chain here. Ali ibn Abdul Aziz al-Barraq, narrated from Asim ibn Ali, from Abu Uwais, who narrated from Hisham ibn Urba, from his father, from Hadra Aisha radiyallahu anha, who is, somebody brought, told her that Hadra Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma, he said that if you kiss your wife now, you have to make budu. So Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu was of the view that touching your uh, uh, male to female breaks uh, wudu. So Hadrat Aisha radiyallahu anha, she was, as you can say, uh, where the Hanafi madhab uh, comes from, amongst other Sahaba, but she said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to kiss, meaning his wife, while fasting and thereafter not make wudu. So, you know, uh, she differed with Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu on this point. And we say, we have the chain to Hadrat Aisha radiyallahu anha, and we are sufficient and satisfied with that. So anyway, Imam Adar al-Qutni rahimahullah reports this, and thereafter he says, I don't know anyone uh, who narrated this from Asim ibn Ali besides Ali ibn Abdul Aziz al-Warraq. Uh, so Imam Zaylai now comments. He says, "Qala Zaylai wa wa ala hada wa Aliyun hada not ala wa Aliyun hada musannif mashhur wa mukharraj anhu fi mustadrak." He says Ali ibn Abdul Aziz al-Warraq is a famous uh, author. You know, Musannif. Uh, His narrations are found in the Mustadrak. You know, like the Mustadrak of Imam Hakim and things of that sort. Wa'asim akhrajal hu al-Bukhari wa Abu Uwais ustushira bihi Muslim. Qultu fal hadithu sahihun. Imam Zayla'i, he says that Ali ibn Abdul Aziz is a famous uh, narrator, I mean, a famous author of kitabs. We have no issue with him. Uh, his narrations are quoted in the Mustadrak. So, you know, he's accepted amongst the fuqaha. Asim, uh, Imam Bukhari even reports his narrations. And the one above him, Imam Abu Uwais, Imam Muslim uses him as a, a supporting proof. So, Imam uh, Zafar Ahmad Sanbi now says, so the hadith is sahih. Because, you know, where's the issue? The fact that uh, Asim ibn Ali is the, the only one who narrates it, or at least Ali ibn Abdul Aziz al Warraq is the only one who narrates it from Asim ibn Ali. It's neither here nor there. If the people are reliable and authentic, then that's as far as we need to go. Any case, we are still on the same track. The next narration is similar. So moving on, Hadith number 129. Hadithna Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba, Hadithna Muhammad ibn al Fudail, An Hajjad, Hajjad, An Amr ibn Shayb, An Zainab al Sahmiya, An Aisha radiallahu anha, An Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kana yatawadda, Thumma yukabbil wa yusalli, Wala yatawadda, Wa rubba ma fa'alahu bihi, Bi, Akhrajahu ibn Maja, Fi sunanihi, Qala Zaylai, Wa hadha sanudun jayidun. Imam Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba, Famous Imam ibn Abi Shayba, Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, if you've heard the kitab. He narrates from Imam Muhammad ibn al-Fudail, from Hajjaj, from uh, uh, Amr ibn Shu'ib, uh, who narrates from Zainab al-Sahamiya, who narrates from Hadra Aisha radiallahu anha, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make wudu, then kiss his wife, and then perform salah without having made wudu again. And sometimes Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do it with me. In other words, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to kiss Hadra Aisha radiallahu anha, and then go and make salah and no need to repeat the wudu. So therefore, Adr Aisha radiallahu anha kept on with this uh, uh, view that touching the opposite gender does not break your wudu. So Imam Ibn Majah is the narrator of this hadith. Imam Zayla'i says, this is a jayid, it's a good, uh, strong uh, chain of narration. Our time is running a bit short, so that's why I'm not gonna go too deep in there because I want to finish these next two pages off before our time runs out. But I'll summarize everything at the end. So, hadith number 130. Hadithna Sa'id ibn Yahya al-Umawi. Qala haddathani abi. Qala haddathani, this is not sana, it's uh, haddathani, uh, a abbreviated form. Haddathani abi. Qala haddathani Yazid ibn Sinan. An Abdirrahman al-Awza'i. An Yahya ibn Abi kathir. An Abi Salama. An Ummi Salama. Radiyallahu anha. An Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana yuqabbiluha wa huwa sa'imun. Thumma la yufdiru. Wa la yahduth. Wa la yahduth wudu. أخرجه الإمام أبو جعفر الطبري في تفسيره وقال ففي صحة الخبر فيما ذكرنا عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدلالة الواضحة على أن اللمس في هذا الموضع أي في قول تعالى أو لامستم النساء لمس الجماع لا جميع معاني اللمس so Imam Sa'id ibn Yahya al-Umawi narrates from his father, who narrates from Yazid ibn Sinan, from Abd al-Rahman al-Awza'i, from Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, from uh, Abu Salama, from Adhrat Umi Salama radiyallahu anha. 
who said that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to kiss her while Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was fasting. And two things. Number one. When Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam kissed her, it didn't break Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's fast, and neither did it break the wudu of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wala yahdu the wudu, meaning Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't consider it a nullify of wudu, nor did Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam go and reperform the wudu. So. You see both Hadrat uh, Umi Salama and Hadrat Aisha radiyallahu anhuma, both of them were of the same viewpoint that touching the opposite gender does not break your wudu. So he says Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tabari reports this in his tafsir and commenting Imam al-Tabari says in the authenticity of this narration of what we have reported here that uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this narration here he says it's it's a clear Proof that the lumps, the touching that is meant here in the ayah, nisa, it refers to uh, sleeping together of husband and wife. Not all of the meanings that lumps can contain, like literally, lumps means to touch. So therefore, it's not the unrestricted touch that is being referred to, but rather it is the touch of husband and wife uh, in bed that is being referred to. قلت وفيه إشعار بصحة الحديث عنده مولانا الزفر أحمد ثان بيسيز and from this you can see clearly that uh, إمام الطبري regarded this narration to be authentic hence why he brought it out as proof ورجاله كلهم ثقات إلا أن يزيد بن سنان هو الرهاوي متكلم فيه متكلم فيه رواء عنه شعبة وهو لا يروي إلا عن ثقة ومروان بن معاوية وغيرهم وقال ابن أبي خيثم عن يحيى بن أيوب المقبري كان مروان بن معاوية يثبته وقال البخاري مقارب الحديث إلا أن ابنه محمدا يروي عنه مناكير كذا في تهذيب قلت وليس ذلك من رواية ابنه عنه وضعفه آخرون فهو حد فهو حسن الحديث Okay, so after mentioning this, he says that the narrators, well, the rest of the, chain, the people in the chain of narration beside, are all authentic except for a person by the name of Yazid ibn Sinan. He says, as far as uh, Yazid ibn Sinan is uh, concerned, Yazid ibn Sinan al Rahawi, as far as he's concerned, he's a mutakallam fihi. He's one of those narrators that there's difference of opinion amongst the muhadithin with regards to him. He's, some regard him as authentic, some regard him as being weak. He says, uh, Imam uh, Shu'aba narrates from. Uh, 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 Imam uh, Shu'aba narrates from uh, Yazid, uh, uh, the narrator over here, and Imam Shu'aba is one of those people that do not report from anyone except someone that he regarded to be authentic. So the fact that Imam Shu'aba narrated from him is proof that he regarded him to be reliable. And if there was nobody else besides Imam Shu'aba, then that alone is sufficient because you have a muhaddith, uh, a faqir, who regards the man as being reliable. Hence, it becomes a difference of opinion, so to speak. He says, Marwan ibn Mu'awiyah and others, Ibn Abi Khaythama, writes from Yahya ibn Ayyub al-Makburi, that Marwan ibn Mu'awiyah used to regard him as being authentic as well. Imam Bukhari says that uh, he's Muqarib al-Hadith. Muqarib al-Hadith, amongst the terminologies of Hadith, Muqarib al-Hadith means someone you know whose narrations are close to, uh, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's almost spot on. It's, it's a term of uh, acceptance rather than a term of rejection. So muqarib al-hadith, when the muhaddithin use this term for somebody, it means they regard him to be reliable. He says, so Imam Bukhari says he's reliable, except that his son Muhammad, he narrates some uh, munkar narrations from his father. So Mulana Zafar says that this narration is not from the, the uh, is not one that has been reported from his son. So, you know, the fact that his son it doesn't fact it doesn't factor in any way in this narration it, it's uh, not that Imam Bukhari was bringing it up for this narration he was just speaking about the narrator as a whole so Mulana Zafar says that because this narration is not being reported through his son uh, therefore the narration is regarded as being reliable yeah but like I say the uh, some muhaddithin yes they graded him as being uh, as being weak but there are some that grade him as being strong and here's one point amongst these narrations that we've read through here there's uh, 
Just to give a random example, uh, amongst the narrations, one of them, Imam uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, there's a narrator in there, and Imam Ahmad grades that person as being weak. Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, on the other hand, grades the man as being reliable. Now, you know Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was Imam Ahli Sunnah. He was, in fact, the teacher of Imam Bukhari in rank now, but Imam Bukhari grades it as being authentic. Imam uh, Ahmad says it's not authentic. And this is why I stated in the past, that the science of Jarfa Ta'adil is an ijtihadi science. There's a lot of uh, depth of uh, knowledge that goes into uh, it, which is why Muhammadin differed with one another with regards to the criteria of acceptance. Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim couldn't sit on the same page with regards to the uh, acceptance criteria. So, you know, that is why, for example, Imam Abu Hanifa maybe didn't accept a certain narration because it didn't meet his criteria. Whereas Imam Bukhari, I mean, Imam Abu Hanifa would have accepted a narration, and maybe Imam Bukhari comes along and says, no, it don't meet his criteria. So that is one of the reasons why fuqaha have different viewpoints. Because yes, you'll find many narrations, but now from a fiqhi perspective, which narration came before the other? because the later one would have abrogated a former one. So you have that fiqhi aspect to things. You've got also the narrators themselves. Somebody says he's weak. Why do they say he's weak? No, they don't explain it. The other person says he's strong. Why does he say he's strong? Okay, he says he's strong for X, Y, Z. So then who do we take? We take the one who, who gives the detailed uh, breakdown because a detailed explanation is better than an ambiguous one and that sort of thing. So that is why... In the field of hadith, it's not just, you know, some people, they don't know. So they open up a book and they see, you know, you can even take a person like, uh, for example, uh, Salafi's main uh, person, Albani. And he'll say, be like, Imam Bukhari says, so, and you'll find this amongst the modern uh, Salafis, especially. So they'll be from Medina University, for example, and then they'll be in the field of hadith. And they'll be like, Imam Dara Qutni said A, that A is weak. And you're like... But what are you talking about? There's like 20 other muhandifin who differed with that. When, you know, when you have a, a very narrow-minded view, then you think that because one imam said that the narration is, or, or that the narrator is weak, that suddenly it means it's, uh, it's not reliable. It doesn't work that way. Especially, especially not for the Hanafi mother. So therefore, we say that, you know, even if some people have graded uh, him as being weak. The other, there are those who are big named uh, muhaddithin that have created him as being reliable. And that is sufficient for us to say we are fine with taking these narrations. And that's the end of the chapter. So, okay, we'll stop on this point here, inshallah. Our time is almost up anyway. But uh, you, as you can see, there there's a lot of uh, things that we have delved into so much on this topic, just about specifically the kissing part on, on things, no, for no reason other than the fact that it's a lot more deeper than just hand to hand, to hand uh, for example, because you can still, if somebody uh, said, uh, you know, they uh, they shook hands, you can maybe say, well, maybe somebody was wearing a glove or they, they shook hands by for example, maybe somebody was holding a stick and the other one shook the stick. You know, people could make some uh, argument against it. But there's no two ways to say somebody was kissed and uh, it wasn't actually on, it wasn't skin to skin, in other words. So therefore, we delved a lot into the topic because it's a big difference between the, the Madhaib, Hanafi and Shafi'i, for example. Now, I'll, I'm a Hanafi. Like I've always said, I'm a Hanafi and I live and die by the Hanafi madhab because I believe it to be the madhab on haq, like all the madhahib are on haq, but I am a Hanafi and I do not leave the confines of my madhab. But the, at the same time, I will caution people from uh, getting too big for their boots where they start thinking that the other uh, imma did not have uh, dalil. You could see we did in the narration above of uh, Hadrat Aisha radiyallahu anha, hearing about Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma uh, saying that uh, wudu is required uh, from kissing. So that shows that Sahaba radiyallahu anhum themselves differed. And the madhahib of fiqh, 
are derived from the fact that Sahaba radiallahu anhu themselves held different viewpoints. So therefore, the Shafi'i madhab who says that it, that it breaks your wudu, they too have Sahaba radiallahu anhum as their dalil, like we have Sahaba as our dalil. So each of the madhahib have got their dalil for the viewpoints that they hold. And we respect all of the uh, fuqaha because Allah will reward each and every one of them for the ijtihad that they had done in the first place. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum بِأَيِّهِمْ إِقْتَدَيْتُمْ إِهْتَدَيْتُمْ إِنَّمَا أَصْحَابِكَ النُّجُومِ The Sahaba رضي الله عنهم are like the stars. Any Sahabi that you follow, they'll guide you to the right path. You're not going to get lost by following one Sahabi over another. So, you know, therefore, we don't chop and change and jump and pick and choose and take different views from different madhahib. No, we stick to one and only one. That way it saves you from uh, fatwa shopping as well. But... You respect each of the malahib and the fuqaha that were involved because as you can tell, it's not Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah who came up with something. He got it from Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So if you find fault with it, you are not finding fault with Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. You are actually finding fault with, Imam, with Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhum as one example. I think Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum as well is of the same view. So, you know, if you're going to be finding fault, you're actually finding fault with Sahaba. So, Keep yourself in line and do not become like the deviants that want to attack left, right, and center. We are the ummah of the middle path. We love and revere all of the fuqaha and all of the muhaddithin, and we give our lives without a second thought for all of the sahaba radiallahu anhum. And we, if a sahabi says so, you know, we accept it, we put it on our heads. So, you know, and we do not raise a finger against it. That's how we regard the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So at the end of the day, follow your madhab. If your madhab says it breaks your wudu, then so be it, then it breaks your wudu. And if your madhab says it does not break your wudu, then so be it, it does not break your wudu. Follow it accordingly. As you can see, there is Dalil for both sides. So we are here focusing on our proof as Ahnaf, why we say it does not break your wudu. If you were to do a Shafi'i Kitab, they would bring in, for example, if you were to open Kitab Al-Um of Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah, uh, or the Musnad of Imam Shafi'i, one of the two Kitabs, I can't remember now offhand, but in one of these two Kitabs, you'll find Dalil, I think it's a Musnad of Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah. If you open that Kitab to the chapter of Tahara, you'll find Imam Shafi'i Shafi'i rahimahullah, quoting some of the proof now, hadith proof that he uses for to say that it refers to uh, plain skin on skin touching. So uh, uh, being a nullifier of wudu. So at the end of the day, what we are doing here in this class is to show that our madhab is based on haq and dalil from Quran and Sunnah and Sahaba and Fuqaha. That's what our purpose here is. We're not fighting with the other aima. We are simply proving that unlike what Juhala go about saying, oh, you have no proof, you have no proof. In reality, we've got very strong proof. But, and that is why we are touching on the various points that we have done here, different, different ahadith. You can see we did a, a, quite a number of ahadith on this one single chapter. And each of these chapters in this kitab, it's sometimes made short and one, two narrations quoted, not because that's the only narrations, but because they don't want to, Imam Zafar Ahmad Khan, we didn't want to make the kitab nine volumes just to deal with uh, wudu, for example. So, you know, that's how things work. It's not to say it's the only dalil, nor is it, in fact, to say that it, it's what Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah used himself. Because at the time when Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah lived, these are the a'imah like Imam Ibn Abi Shayba rahimahullah and others who are now reporting some of these narrations, they weren't even born. So, you know, the narrations that Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah had, had even an even shorter chain. But yeah, long story short, at the end of the day, the overwhelming amount of proofs that we have from the Hanafi perspective, we have from the Quran, we have from the Sunnah, we have from the Sahaba, we have from the dictionary linguistical perspective, we've got uh, fuqaha, you know, we've got everything that we need in our corner. So we have no reason to look elsewhere or to feel shy or to think, you know, maybe there is a proof stronger than ours. No, we are more than satisfied that the dalil of our madhab is the dalil of the highest level. And Allah knows best. And that's where we will stop for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. At least we managed to end the chapter. So in our next class, next week, inshallah, we will continue on from page 186, which will be this new chapter.
dealing still with the nullifiers of wudu. Um, before we actually end, uh, I'll give a, a couple of seconds in case anybody has any questions before our time runs out, because we've still got, according to this, four minutes and 50 seconds. So if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to ask your, your questions now. Like I always say, you're always welcome to ask it, but if you hadn't asked it and you are requiring to ask it now, by all means, you're more than welcome. Okay, looks like no questions have come in. So I would assume there are no questions. And that being then that we will end then on this point here, inshallah ta'ala. Let me see. But yeah. All right, so that being that then, we ended on, the, we'll end on this point here, inshallah. Next week, we touch on a new uh, issue. Is it an alifaya? Is it not an alifaya? What exactly is it about? That will be forthcoming attractions, as they say. But we'll do that next week, inshallah. Until then, next time, wa sallallahu wa sallamu wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.